Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you the difference between opacity and fill in Photoshop. Quite a few people have asked me, what is the difference between opacity and fill in Photoshop? Because for a layer set on normal blend mode with no layer styles, they do function exactly the same way. However, that is where the similarities between the two end. So I'm gonna show you what the difference is and how you can use those differences to your advantage. Let's jump into Photoshop. All right, the first thing we'll look at is just a layer sitting on top. And if we adjust the opacity, which is right here, you can see that as I bring it towards 0%, it is becoming see-through. And if we do the same with fill, it is doing exactly the same thing. So in this scenario where you have a layer, the opacity and fill are identical. And many people unfortunately come to that conclusion that these two are the same when in fact they're not the same. And I'll show you how they differ. Um, when it comes to a layer like this that's on normal, the primary difference comes in when applying these layer styles. So for example, if I add a stroke to this and maybe an outer glow or inner glow and an outer glow, and now if I take down the opacity, it's gonna take everything and make it transparent. But if I take down the fill, it's only gonna reduce the opacity of the fill of the layer, meaning what's inside the layer, not the effects that are sitting on top. And this allows me to create a nice effect like this, where this, because the fill is zero, is not showing my actual layer content. It's only showing the effects that are sitting on top of it. And we can do that here with this glow. I can take these same effects, hold down Option and Command to drag those layer effects here. And if I take down the fill, you can see I now have that effect happening here. And one other thing I wanna show you here because um, I see a lot of people have a question on this and I know I did when I started, is now if I wanna take this and I'm just gonna go select subject and I wanna add a mask to this glow. So I'm gonna go ahead, hold down option and click on the mask. And you can see what it's done is it's created a mask around her. And the problem is the stroke effect and the glow effect are being affected by this mask. And I don't want that. I want them to only be affected by the background layer. So to fix that, I'm gonna double click on this little FX right here. And under advanced blending, you see this option here, layer mask hides effects. If I turn that on, what it's now doing is it's treating the layer effects as part of this layer as far as the mask is concerned. So that's the one thing to track when you apply this technique of using zero fill with 100% opacity and then creating the effects that you want with layer styles. And that is the primary difference between opacity and fill when it comes to your standard layers. The opacity affects the opacity of the entire layer, whereas fill affects the opacity of the content of your layer. Okay, but there is another, um, I would say, equally important, if not more important, distinction between opacity and fill, and that's when it comes to blending options. So here you can see two layers, they are identical, they're simply a color wash, and on the left side here we have opacity, and on the right side we have fill. Now these are on normal, one is set to 40% opacity, the other one is set to 40% um, fill. So if I select both of these and start running through these blending options, we can see right away which ones have a different effect between opacity and fill. So normal, identical. Dissolve, identical. Darken, identical. Multiply, color burn. 
is where we start to see the difference. So here you can see on color burn, 40% opacity does not give us the same effect as 40% color fill. And with linear burn, again, the effect is not the same between fill and opacity. Dark in color, the effect is the same. Lighten, the effect is the same. Screen, the same. Color dodge, not at all the same. So this is another great example where the fill is creating a very different effect than the opacity. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you in a second what that difference is um, technical, technically, but I first want to show you just which blending modes this applies to and which ones it doesn't. So linear dodge, it does lighten color, it does not overlay, it does not soft light it does not hard light no vivid light yes linear light yes pin light no hard mix yes difference yes and then the rest no okay so i'll i'll include a list of which blending modes are affected in the description of this video but now i want to show you how the two differ in the way they handle the blending of the layers. So here we can see difference. And here on the left side is the opacity. And if I bring that up to 100%, you can see what that looks like. And if I bring the fill here to 100%, you can see they are identical. But as I take down on the left side here, the opacity, Essentially what it's done is it's made a stamp of this state and it's reducing that as a stamp on top of your layer. So let me show you in effect what it's done. So this is the effect at 100% and, it, and you can see here it's its own layer. So it's sitting on top. It's not a blend there's no blend here it's just on a normal layer sitting on top but it is a stamp of what this layer is doing so now if i take down the opacity of this you can see what the opacity slider does with a blend all it's doing is it's taking a rubber stamp of the effect at 100 percent and then as an overlay reducing that the opacity of that overlay. Okay, so that's opacity. Now what is fill doing? Well, what fill is doing is it's actually changing the percentage of the mathematical algorithm that's being used to blend these two layers. So in effect, at 10%, it's creating that mathematical algorithm of difference but only at 10%. So as I increase the percentage, it's actually increasing the strength of the blend, as opposed to opacity, which keeps the blend at 100% and simply reduces the opacity of that layer and the effect that it's created. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna show you one other example of where this really comes into play. So here I have a pattern, it's on normal. I'm gonna put the opacity and fill to 100. I'm gonna change this to hard mix. And you can see it's creating a pretty interesting visual effect. Hard mix basically pushes, it works very similar to a threshold where it pushes anything above 50% into the darks and anything below 50% into the light. So it's basically creating a threshold on top of your image. Now, if I reduce the opacity of this, it's simply taking that effect and reducing the opacity of it on top of my original layer. So you can see the harshness of that threshold is still at 100%, but it's simply showing, you know, it's making it uh, 93% transparent here. Okay, so what does fill do? Well, fill, like I mentioned before, changes the strength of the effect. So if I start to reduce this, 
you can see that the threshold is becoming softer. And I'm still getting that hard mix, but I'm getting it at a very soft strength. So I have much more control here in terms of how this blend is happening and the effect that I'm getting. So here, if I set this to 40%, that's a pretty cool look. Whereas if this was 100 and the opacity was 40, I'm getting a very different effect. I'm basically just getting my real strong threshold uh, overlaid on top of my original image at 40% opacity. So that's where this opacity and fill really come into play. And it's really important when you're using the blending modes that have these strength algorithms um, to use fill instead of opacity when you want to lessen the effect of that blend. Okay, one last thing I want to show you is the shortcuts. Um, when you're on a layer, um, the shortcut for opacity is any number on your keyboard. So if I wanted this to be at 100%, I would hit zero. If I wanted it to be at 20%, I would hit two. If I wanted it to be at 50%, I would hit five. Pretty simple, that's how opacity works. And if you want a more refined increment, like if I wanted to make this 65, I just hit six, five, right at one after another, and it's gonna make it 65. Okay, so let's hit zero, bring that back to 100. And for fill, the shortcut is exactly the same, except for you're gonna hold down shift. So. To make this 20% fill, I'll hold down shift and push two, five for 50, six, five for 65. So again, exactly the same shortcut. I'm just holding down shift as I do it. Okay, last thing I wanna show you is brushes. So for any tool that uses a brush, which includes the brush, uh, the rubber stamp, the erase tool, any tool that has a brush setting this applies to. So with my brush selected, um, and if I hit five on my keyboard now, you'll notice that my opacity here did not change, but the opacity of the brush did. So that's an important thing to know. If you want to change the opacity of your layer, make sure you're on the move tool, which is V on your keyboard, and then you can hit five That'll change the opacity to 50%. I'll make it back to 100%. All right, so going back onto our brush tool, the numbers when you're on any brush-based tool, the opacity is gonna be affected by just hitting a number, and the flow is gonna be affected by shift and then hitting a number. Now, many people don't know what the difference is between opacity and flow. So I'm gonna show you real simply what that difference is. So I'm gonna put the opacity on 10% and with my brush, a white brush, I'm gonna start brushing. And I'm gonna go over the same spot many times. I'm gonna keep brushing over it, brushing over it. And you'll notice it's basically not changing at all unless I increase the area that I'm painting over, but it's not getting any wider. And that's because in a single brush stroke, it will always remain 10%. Okay, so what about flow? Well, let's bring our opacity back up to 100 and let's bring our flow down to 10%. And I'm gonna go ahead and just Command A and delete and then Command D. All right, so now I start painting. Okay, already you can see as I'm going over it, it's getting lighter. So this acts more like how you would expect uh, a shading marker or even a pencil to work. So the more times you go over the same area, the more lightness it's gonna get. So each time I run the stroke over one spot, it's adding 10% more white. So that's the primary difference between flow and opacity. Personally, I prefer to reduce flow as opposed to reducing opacity, just because with flow, you have more control. If I want to make an area darker, I can just keep painting over it. Now I can do that with opacity as well, but with opacity, I'm having to start a new stroke each time. So if I wanted to create the same effect with opacity, I'd have to brush, 
start a new stroke, brush again, start a new stroke, brush again, start a new stroke, brush again, because each, each stroke is 10% opacity. But in order to build on top of your existing brushing, you have to create a new stroke, meaning you have to click your mouse. Whereas with the fill, or the flow, sorry, <laughs> with the flow, I can do that without ever having to click my brush again. So that's the difference between those two, but the shortcuts are the same. For flow, you're gonna hold down shift, and for the opacity, you're just gonna hit a number on your keyboard. So there you have it. Those are the differences between opacity and fill. And hopefully by understanding this, you can actually leverage those to your advantage and create more interesting art in Photoshop. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment. I do try to re uh, read them all. And here are some other videos to check out. I will see you next time.